You're watching the Bethel College Football Show. I say, brother, you stay home! Brother, 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 brother. College, who was previously six in the country, the Threshers twelfth with the win. Bethel moves up to number nine in the country, and that is the highest ranking for Bethel since the two divisions of NAIA football were combined back in 1997. And the Threshers, more importantly, get the win on Fall Fest and a record crowd. How about that crowd yeah. last Saturday? It was awesome. It was awesome. I, I mean, it's still. Uh, I had people from out of town watching come to the game, and they couldn't believe it. It, it was phenomenal. It was a great environment, no question. Always a great game when Southwestern uh, and Bethel get up together. Uh, so many things happening on that day alone. Uh, you know, if you're athletics personnel, you're, you're running around like crazy because uh, you, you had the Thresher Stadium locker room uh, groundbreaking there shortly before uh, pregame, things like that, the unveiling of a new mascot. Um, Fall Fest weekend, I just it was so busy, but it was so awesome at the same time. And uh, it was a great environment, no question for the Threshers' victory, 31-23 to over Southwestern. Well, Coach, before we get to the individual items within that win, uh, how did it feel coming away from that one? I mean, it, it felt, I mean, honestly, about the same as, as all the other wins, you know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. always, it always feels good to – to when you're able to, um, you know, do what you set out to do at the beginning of the week, which is play well enough to, to win, you know. But uh, truthfully, Southwestern, I mean, definitely a very, very good and quality football team with a great coach uh, over there. So, I mean, we knew we knew that we, we had to play, you know, um, as close to our potential as possible. And I, it's all it always feels good when our kids uh, do just that, when it, uh, regardless of – what the outcome may be, if our kids are playing well and, you know, they're making plays and they're having fun, I'm going to be excited for them. No question. Bethel just stepped up when the moments came, and it started fairly early, um, obviously punting there on the first drive, but so did uh, Southwestern. They get stopped as well. And then the Threshers get the ball. I think it was on your guys' own 30, 35-yard line. And it might have been even further back than that. After a block field goal. Yeah, right? yeah, that's right. A block field goal off a 38-yard attempt for uh, Gabe Madrano. And uh, that was quite the way to start things off. You know, uh, Trey Palmer and Brendan Sanders in on that. And that was huge because later in the game, the kicker makes three other field goals. Mm -hmm. And he's a very good kicker, uh, one of the best in the conference, no question, probably one of the best in the country in, in AI uh, kicking. But – that was a turning point, I felt, early uh, to just kind of spark the team and then it transitions into the offense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's uh, our, our guys, they, you know, they feed off of one another. They play for one another. So when, when good things happen, uh, sometimes they, they come in spurts uh, mm -hmm. for us. Uh, but at the same time, you know, when bad things happen, obviously it's been coined here for, for years, make something good happen. Uh, and that's exactly how these guys play. They just, again, they, they, they feed off of each other and definitely play for each other. And then, as the hinted at, next possession for the Threshers, um, it started off with an awesome Tucker Smith. I think he ran it 65 yards to the 10-yard line, 8-yard line, give or take. And then a play later, DJ Sears 
uh, doing some great things. Um, you know, got some pressure from I think both DNs, made them both miss, and then just kind of rolls out and didn't give up on the play whatsoever and finds Isaac Harkness for his first college touchdown. Mm -hmm. That was an amazing moment. Um, I, you know, eight-yard touchdown. Those type of things, just everybody's breath is kind of taken away in those type of plays because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's so easy to throw an interception in that situation at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because uh, I could hear uh, Coach, Coach Denton and Ashley Coach Langford on the headset saying, uh, it's Isaac, Isaac's open, Isaac's open, Isaac's open. And, and sure enough, as he threw the ball, I couldn't tell what was going on in the far side of the field. And, you know, I just hear the, you know, the crowd erupt, and I figure that it must have been Isaac. I, did, I only knew that because they were saying he's in the headset, but I was just, uh, I was really, really happy for uh, DJ and, and, and Isaac getting his first. College touchdown, and uh, like you said, it is it's one of those things. I, I'm, I'm just right there with you, holding my breath, like yeah. what's gonna happen here. So, uh, but DJ does that. He, he's, he's made plays. Like I said, he's made plays for his entire career here at Bethel. And, and as short as it is, him just being a sophomore, he's made plays um, week in and week out uh, in, in the Bethel uniform. So, uh, when, when he does things like that, uh, I'm, I'm always amazed, but not really surprised. There you go. I mean, I think we're all thinking that at the same time after what he's done so far. But that capped off a 72-yard drive on an eight-yard touchdown pass. Uh, the pressures went up 7-7. Seven to seven. And then towards the end of the first quarter, Southwestern scores. Um, I believe you guys fumbled the ball, and they got the ball in pretty good field position there, uh, like less than 35 yards out. And then they get the 22-yard touchdown pass. Um, you know, not many people can do that against Trey Palmer. And, uh, you know, when you have a 6'6 six, six tight end, that, that kind of makes things a little complicated. Uh, but he ended up catching the ball and got a foot in. Um, and got the touchdown there for the mound builders. Um, and then they took a 10 to seven lead with 7.39 to play in the second quarter on a 32 yard field goal. And that's the last time they let in the game. And the Threshers responded just before half. Uh, this play, I felt like, was, you know, was tremendous, and it showed a lot of growth in your team's passing ability this year when DJ found Braden Francis for the 57-yard touchdown. Braden caught it at the 20, took it the rest of the way, but it was timed perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, DJ did a great job of, you know, getting to where he needed to be to throw the ball, mm -hmm. first of all, and, you know, putting it right on the money. Um, you know, we've seen that so many times from Braden. I think he has like 20 um, touchdowns that he's caught now in his career in a fresher uniform, mm -hmm. which seems a little low based on, you know, how much he's been involved in the passing game over the last few years. But no question, uh, a great moment for him. You guys go up 14 to 10, mm -hmm. rolling into half. And then it seemed like you guys were just still focused on, you know, Improving some of the things, but you still had the lead going into half. Actually, 14 to 13. 14, 13, right. After they made a 44 yard field yeah. goal. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at halftime, you guys up one. Uh, what was the mentality like in the locker room? I mean, it was, you know, honestly, it's, it's, where you want to be, you know, the the message uh, to those guys, and and of course we, you know, we we were we were knocking on the door right before half. Uh, probably could have could have attempted a field goal, maybe not, but we knew we got the ball back. You know, we didn't want to risk. Uh, we'd already uh, blocked a field goal. We didn't want to risk them having an opportunity to. to uh, you know, respond and, and mm -hmm. block one of ours and, and something bad happens and, and takes a little bit of momentum away sure. going into the half when we get the ball back. So the, the message was, hey, we get the ball back. We have the lead. This is the number six team in the country. What else could you ask for? Right. right. Like we, we not only are we loving to play the game, but we're, we're playing it well enough to be in the lead right now. You know what I mean? And so the message was like, if, 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 if they, they don't score anymore, we win right now. You know what I mean? If, if the game was over right now, we win. So it's nothing to feel to be panicked about or feel like we got to hold on to this or anything like that. It's like, hey, let's go out. Let's have another great half and let's, you know, play well enough, play well enough to win this thing. So. Yeah, I, I thought, uh, you know, being up one at halftime based on, you know, the amount of catches and yardage that guys like for Southwestern, like Lake Hoffman and Zion Kenner, number one, mm -hmm. had, um, you know, keeping them to 
you know, just one touchdown in the first half, mm -hmm. I thought was a tremendous effort from the defense. Um, you know, <laughs> obviously you get interception late in this one, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But up 14 to 13 at halftime, uh, come out early third quarter, and uh, you guys got the ball, and Chance Scurry, he was kind of quiet on the night. He only scored two touchdowns. <laughs> but th they were kind of touchdowns like, did he get in? You know, he, you know, in the pack kind of thing. And he did it twice for you guys um, with two scores from Chance Scurry. I think those are only his second and third rushing touchdowns of the year. Um, but then uh, they score on – they kind of went no huddle there. Uh, to score their touchdown mm -hmm. uh, with Martez Jones, the sec second on a 12-yarder. The pack kind of pushed him yeah. <laughs> the next nine yards yeah. into the end zone. Yeah. But, uh, and th but that was it for scoring for Southwestern. It was a 28-21 to game. Uh, you guys drive again, and then Carson Sauceda making his first ever field goal attempt at the varsity level uh, in a Thresher uniform puts you guys up 31-20. to And uh, – you only give up a field goal from them again. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they have the onside kick. Uh, <laughs> just happened to catch the ball. You know, it hit the hands and then the helmet. And then, you know, whenever that helmet's involved in mm -hmm. that kind of play, it's hard to really retain the football. But they go down. Um, you know, they they get, try to use everything they can. And they throw at Trey Palmer. And he seals the deal for you guys. For the second year in a row, Trey Palmer with the interception to win it. Yes, he does, and I, you know, um, I, I don't know why um, they they threw his way. Really, you know, if it was the quarterback, just you know, seeing seeing something or thinking that he saw something. But man, I'm 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 glad, I'm glad it was going that Trey. <laughs> and uh, but honestly, I feel pretty confident with any of the the DBs who were on the field. Like they mm -hmm. they were, I, I you know, it it was weird because. Uh, people asked if I was nervous in that moment, and actually not at all. Uh, number one, it was it was Josh Seaboat on the hands team mm -hmm. uh, that the ball bounced off of. Yeah, and I, I knew that. <laughs> I knew in that moment. I knew in that moment that they were gonna get a stop. Nobody wants an angry Josh Seaboat in practice. <laughs> like Josh, I knew he was gonna go and get it back himself, and mm -hmm. you know, and and then everybody's gonna rally around that and. It's just you could just tell, like it it was our night. It was our night, you know. Yeah. It was just uh, uh, that that was a night we, we we weren't gonna we weren't gonna go down, and we knew at the end of the day if they scored, they had to get two as well to even tie it up, and yeah. and we were ready to play. So, yeah, and good teams like them have good kickers. Uh, you know, you, you only hold them to two touchdowns in the mm -hmm. game. Um, you know, you play against a team that may not have. It's good of a kicker, and you know there's a little bit more separation than that. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys definitely feel like you had control and yeah. momentum after that 10 to seven uh, score line. So yeah. uh, the Threshers get the victory, 31 to 23. DJ Sears uh, throwing for 259 and two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. uh, Tucker Smith had the 65 yard run for you guys. Two rushing touchdowns from Chance Scurry, um, and the rushing yards. You know, you know a lot of guys getting looks in that phase of the game. Tucker mm -hmm. Smith, your leading receiver with four catches for 66. Braden Francis, two catches for 60 and a touchdown. And then Isaac Harkness, three catches for 50 yards and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. And then Darian Price mm -hmm. had three catches for 47 yards. Had some big first down catches for yes, you guys. Did. And then Trayvon Madison had one catch for 36 yards. Mm -hmm. I felt, you know, all those things were just coming up at the right time when you guys were moving the football. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, it, it starts in a week. They do such a great job uh, playing pitch and catch uh, in a the week. They just did it. Had another great week. I, I was telling someone, man, who'd have thought that, you know, uh, credit to, you know, Coach Denton and um, Taj, Taj Munnings, who helps out with, with receivers as well. And then, mm -hmm. uh, even, you know, Brett Ash, who's over there helping throw the balls to him. We, if you'd have told me we'd have receivers at Bethel College, <laughs> you know, the, the – First year from transitioning from a run-oriented offense that can play the way these young men played last Saturday and that I'm seeing them play in practice every day, I'd have, I'd have thought you were joking. It would have been a joke. Like, I'd have been like, no way we're going to have receivers that are as far as they are within this spread system. 
uh, because it is. It's about getting used to systems. Now, mm -hmm. you know, maybe one, two, maybe, but we've got, uh, uh, I'm telling you, man, a stable of receivers um, who, who can do it. Mm -hmm. ba basically, all of them can, can do it. They're just getting, they're getting so much better, so. No question. I mean, you turn around and, you know, you haven't thrown for, you know, let alone 259 yards in a game this year. You do it against, you know, the, the biggest opponent at that point yeah. in your season. Um, and Southwestern, and that was quite the feat, I felt like, for you guys. And a turning point, uh, no question, for the Threshers with the 31-23 to 23 victory. Uh, looking at some other scores in the conference, there was a lot of tight ball games. Um, if, if you didn't look on the score lines in the conference last Saturday, excuse me, uh, St. Mary winning at Ottawa 33-23. to 23. Avila getting the win over Kansas Wesleyan. Uh, the Coyotes were ranked 15th at the time. Avila wins 18-14 to 14 in that football game. They were down 14-9 to 9 at halftime and shut out Kansas Wesleyan in the second half, which is not an easy feat to do. Avila, one of the top five defenses in all of NAIA. We'll get to them in our second half of the show. Uh, McPherson winning at home against Friends, 31-22. to 22. Had a little bit of a scare there for the moment with a pick six, put Friends up 22-21 to 21 in that game, but the Bulldogs pull it out. And then in double overtime, Sterling wins at home, 40-34 to 34 against Bethany. And, of course, your guys have scored 31-23 to 23 over at Southwestern, and the Threshers move to number nine in the country. Up to 6-0 and oh now, um, you know, with four games – Left on the schedule at Avila, home against Sterling, at Tabor, and home against St. Mary. There's some pretty tough road games in there that I think will prepare you guys for whatever happens the rest of the way. Um, no question. I know you guys don't take any opponent for granted whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, going on the road and not getting ready, well, we'll talk a little bit more th about this. But, you know, the last four games of the regular season are here. And it's, it's just kind of flown by in the season. But it's really a time to where you guys will have that target on your back again and be tested um, away from home in half of those games. Mm -hmm. and you know how I feel about targets on back. It's hard to see it when you're coming right at them. You know what I mean? Right. And that, that's just how I feel about it. It is, um, it, I mean, the, the, the great, I say all great opponents, all great opponents, you know, all got something unique and special. Uh, that they do, and you can't get wrapped too much uh, into that. You you have to prepare the way that you know how to prepare, and uh, and go enjoy playing the game, man. Enjoy playing the game. That's the thing about it. Like all of this stuff, you know, we talking targets on backs and all this stuff. Man, I don't care about none of that. You know what I mean? Like I just right. I want these guys to just play. You know what I mean? Sure. Like have a enjoy what you do because mm -hmm. that's what we've been doing so far. Why would you stop? Why would you stop? Right? Why would yeah. you stop? I just we thing. just met we just met tonight with uh I just met with a small group tonight and man that's all we talked about. All we talked about is um, you know, people what keeps people from going all in, which is the theme of the week, all in, heart and soul, is, is fear of failure, what's gonna happen if I do well, what you gotta understand is when you're all in, regardless of the outcome, you're gonna leave better. You're going to be better. It's like the guy who comes in and has an All-American in front of him. Mm -hmm. So since an All-American's in front of me, should, should I concede? Should I not work hard? You know, should I not try to take this guy's spot? Right. No, I'm going to go all in, and I'm going to be a part of the team, and I'm going to do my best to try to take his spot. Because guess what? Even if I don't, when he leaves, I'm better now. Right. Because I wasn't sitting down wasting my time. And that's how it is. We're, gonna, we're all in. Because we don't just play for this for tomorrow, right? We don't just play for this this game here, all right? We're we're looking at the future and the future and the future because we want this thing to be sustainable, right? So we're all in. We're we're locked and loaded. We're we're ready to play. You know what I mean? And sure. uh, if you don't believe me, man, look at my leg shaking. <laughs> You know, no. <laughs> he, he's ready to suit up himself. <laughs> yeah, for for a player too. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah. The, obviously, you know, those, those sentiments um, definitely important in understanding the mindset of the program mm -hmm. for those on the outside yeah. going forward. So, 
When we come back here on the Thresher Football Show, we're going to talk about the Threshers against the Avila Eagles coming up next. Thresher fans, get ready for the upcoming school year by becoming a member of the Bethel Booster Club. Your membership impacts all athletic programs by paying for experiences last year, such as the Threshbees Award Show, postseason experiences and postseason tickets, the Hall of Fame Banquet, enhanced live streaming equipment, new banners and Thresher Gym, equipment for the Gearing Hall Weight Room, windscreens at Ward Tennis Center, and Thresher Stadium. Be a part of Thresher Athletics history and a booster club that is living out the Bethel College Athletics mission by creating life-changing experiences for our student-athletes through four levels of membership plus parent and young alumni specials. Athletics is an integral part of the Bethel College experience and thanks to your support we look forward to growing our success for the future. Visit BethelThreshers.com slash Booster Club to become a member today. We're kicking off another year here at Bethel College and we need your help in making this another successful season. Thanks to your generosity in the spring, we were able to purchase championship rings and practice jerseys for our players, giving them a big time experience. Since then, we've added several new faces to the program and we couldn't be more excited to get to work molding a group of upstanding young men. All summer long, our guys have been getting after it in the weight room, and since August 5th, we've been hard at work preparing to put a product on the field that honors the tradition of Bethel College football. With your help, we're ready to make this another great year. Thanks for your generosity, and roll on. Thank you. 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 Welcome back to the Thresher Football Show. Bethel College 6-0 getting set to take on the Avila University Eagles from the Z in Kansas City, the campus of Avila University. Avila coming into this one 5-1, fresh off a victory on the road at Kansas Wesleyan uh, and an impressive victory, 18-14. No question, they took Southwestern right down to the wire and now they get ready to host the Threshers. It's a 1 o'clock kick, only 1 o'clock kicks in the regular season left for the Thresher football schedule. And it uh, should be a, an exciting game. The Threshers haven't been to Avila since 2019 and pulled off a good victory there. And then the, the year after, it was a close game in the season opener against the Eagles. And then last year, Avila came here and Bethel um, under Josh Moran had quite the day and um, had a large score line, let's say that. But this Avila team, it's a little bit different. They've got some guys, um, they've had a few transfers come in, and uh, uh, they definitely mean business coming into Saturday's football game. And I, Coach, I, I know you acknowledge all this <laughs> somewhat, yeah. but, um, and I know your mentality coming towards the game, but you know it's, you know, it's a, I know it's just another game to you guys, but when you look at Avila, what, what type of team do you see? I see, a, like you said, a very impressive uh, football team. Um, you, you hit it on the head earlier. I mean, their defense is uh, really, really solid. Um, all, offensively, uh, they, they have a, a, a quarterback um, who, who's probably uh, the most mobile, mobile quarterback that, that we'll see uh, within the conference. Uh, so, which, which could, could uh, you know, uh, cause some problems if, if we don't, you know, if we don't uh, contain them well. Uh, but again, like I mean, I, I think they are a, a good football team, a really good football team. Uh, but it's it, that all that does is it, it excite us, you know, because uh, you know we, we're blessed and fortunate enough to be able to 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 play them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and uh, really really test test ourselves as well, and and really see uh wh where we are this saturday so i'm really excited about that they are they're a really good football team coach benavitez uh i i consider him uh one of the coaches that you know that i'm friends with in in the conference we we've texted each other back and forth throughout the season a little bit and uh so again i, I know they're they'll be well coached and ready to play uh but i expect our guys to be the same and that's what makes it fun no question. Avila Eagles, you mentioned it. They are number four in the country in total defense when it comes to yardage, only giving up 202 yards per game 
Um, that's 59 yards on the ground and 143 um, through the air. Seven interceptions on their defense and six fumble recoveries, 16 sacks for Avila. Uh, to give you some perspective, uh, Kansas Wesleyan at number three in the country at 200 yards per game. The Threshers are at number 10, only giving up 238 yards uh, per game on the season. And then at number one, Lindsey Wilson, um, for some perspective in that area in defense. Uh, Avila definitely talented within that and have a lot of guys returning uh, on the defensive side of the football. One, one thing I noticed uh, look, studying them. Uh, the Threshers, uh, since we're talking about you know national statistics, the Threshers um, still one of the top two in the country in running the football. Obviously, you guys had to pass it quite a bit, and it's only situational. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, when you had to throw the ball 259 yards, you could have easily ran it for that much against Southwestern in that type of football game. But definitely something that, um, you know, to be impressed with, kind of switching from one offense to the other, mm -hmm. still among the best in running the football. But uh, getting back to Avila on the season five and one, uh, only lost to Southwestern. They're definitely a good team. They're getting them. Um, it's a home game for them. And you know, they have been really just flying under the radar, I feel like, all season long. Um, you know, they're finally ranked, mm -hmm. what, number 24. And I, 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 I don't know how I feel about that because, you know, I've seen it from, you know, every week this season that they're a very good football team. Um, they, we've heard things about the people that they've got in that uh, transfer-wise, we've seen them have transfers from other schools in the conference like McPherson and Ottawa, some players go up there uh, to Kansas City. So that'll be something we know that they are talented, no question. Uh, their quarterback, Eli Williams, he's a freshman, um, throwing, throwing for 860 yards, 10 touchdowns, and two interceptions on the year. A running back is a familiar face in Malik Nesbitt. Uh, a few years ago, I believe he was the conference offensive player of the year, and no question, an All-American. He's a talented running back. He's already ran for 434 yards through six games this year and five rushing touchdowns. And then you mentioned Eli Williams being a dual threat quarterback, and that's something um, we could argue you guys haven't seen a lot of mm -hmm. uh, this year from opponents, guys that um, will look for opportunities to run and pass and really just make the defense respect that ability. Um, your defense is obviously well versed in multiple different offensive schemes, but uh, from what you've seen with Williams, uh, how do how do you kind of counteract that to to some degree? Well, you know, we we have uh, a, a bunch of different types of de defensive linemen, um, and so you know, uh, we've got some some smaller, quicker guys who you may see uh, getting a little bit more time this this week. Uh, but you, you don't – when you find yourself trying to do too much uh, to counter someone else and getting away from who you are, uh, I believe that sometimes you can, you can coach yourself out of a win more than allowing your guys to just go and play uh, to, to a win. You know what I mean? Like, sure. uh, it, it, it's been said, and this is, might be coach talk, but – uh, it's something that I, I that stuck with me for a while, and even you know, Coach Grider, our veteran coach, actually said it this week. Not about this situation, but uh, he was like, "More games are lost through coaching than are won." You know what I mean? Like he's like, sometimes you gotta just let your guys play. You know what I mean? And don't try to overthink it and do stuff that you haven't been doing. We've been doing mm -hmm. things all year, and. Our guys are getting, getting, um, you know, pretty familiar and, and getting good at what they do. Let them do what they do, right? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So. Yeah, we definitely got a sense of that um, over many games this year, freshly off of the Southwestern game. Uh, you know, they had guys like Hoffman and Kenner that I mentioned that got some good yardage in the passing game. Um, definitely had a few different backs that got some good looks as well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think that's a solid mindset as well, just, you know, you guys have got this far um, as a team, and definitely you, you rely heavily on your leadership and just the things that have got you to this point mm -hmm. on the season. So in the receiving game, uh, a couple of their leading receivers, Andrew Williams, 
who's caught four touchdowns for 239 yards. Nesbitt, definitely a factor in the passing game as well, can catch out of the backfield. Uh, Melvin Reed, a transfer uh, from McPherson College, he has 13 catches for 145 yards. And a couple other guys with at least 100 yards receiving for Abila in that phase of the game. Uh, defense uh, has some strong linebackers. They're obviously, they're leading tacklers. Nick Furlow, 31 tackles on the season. Um, averaging six tackles for or t six tackles a game, he has eight and a half tackles for loss and three forced fumbles and an interception. Um, they were really balanced. They have guys like Joey Mars, another sophomore, Jose Batista, another sophomore. I remember talking about those guys last year mm -hmm. and when the Threshers played them and seeing a lot of good things that they were doing despite the score line at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so some different different guys that can be a factor for them defensively. Um, and uh, obviously, I, like I said, they're a top four defense in the country coming into Saturday's game, a one o'clock kick from Kansas City. You can watch it on the KCAC network, and uh, they're from Kansas City. Or if you want to make it up to Kansas City, it's a it's a different kind of venue mm -hmm. at Avila University. A lot of combined into one. But um, looking at their defense, Coach, I know we talked about their offense, mm -hmm. but their defense, they have some guys. There's some young guys as mm -hmm. well that are playing fairly well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think, uh, you know, we know we know the defense have not give up a lot um, this season. And it really is just, a, you know, that's encouraging uh, to hear because you really get to go out and, and test yourself uh, compared to some of the other teams in the conference, like to see if it is, if it is something like, you know, that we have over here that we're doing well. Like, you know what I mean? So we're, we're excited to go and play them uh, a top, you know, top five defense in the, in the country uh, because it like, again, it's a, it's a measuring tool. You know what I mean? Like regardless, we, we're going to play them, right? Might as well play one of the best and be able to come away from it. Uh, either saying like, wow, you know, we do a lot of good things or yeah, man, you know, defenses like this can give us problems. I think it's going to be the, the, you know, the, Wow, we do a lot of good things. I'm telling you, man, our guys are – I think our offense is just – I told you, we were somewhere in the middle of the beginning. I told you that uh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, I believe. Like, sure. I'm telling you, man, it's, 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 it's moving on pace, man. It's right on pace to, to be, a, you know, a, a top offense. So, I'm excited to watch these guys this week, especially with a, with a great challenge uh, in front of us. No question, trending upward. Have a tool for just about any problem you need to fix. It, it sometimes it's what it seems like for the Thunder offense so far. Uh, the, it's the Threshers and the Avila Eagles. Other games in the conference this week. Uh, Kansas Wesleyan goes to McPherson. That should be an interesting game. Uh, McPherson fresh off a victory against Friends. Uh, they're definitely a quality team, and obviously Kato off the home loss. Um, be interesting to see what happens in that ball game. Bethany is at St. Mary. Sterling is at Friends. And Tabor is taking on Southwestern. That's another one mm -hmm. to keep an eye on, a 1 of 30 kick from Winfield. Uh, how does Southwestern respond? Uh, does Tabor continue playing well? Uh, they're at 5 and 1 as well. They're, they talk about sleepers in the conference right now. Um, no doubt the Threshers go there in their final road contest of the regular season. So some of those matchups uh, should be interesting. Uh, in the conference, all one o'clock kicks uh, the rest of the way, so it appears in the conference schedule. I know uh, some other schools play some non-conference games in what would be their bye weeks typically um, here late in the season. Those might be adjusted uh, on kickoffs. But uh, the, the whole, with the conference right now, you have four teams arguably in the top 30 in the country. Um, you know, again, <laughs> you have, Last year, had three teams in the top 20. That's going to do it for this week's Thresher Football Show. I'm Dan Page for Coach A.B. Stokes. Thanks for watching. this Again, this show is for all you loyal supporters of Bethel Football. You can watch the game against Avila, 1 o'clock kick on Saturday from Kansas City on the KCAC Network. Until next time, roll on.